Hello! Thank you for returning to my channel. In this video, I'm going to tell you about atomic mass and average atomic mass. Uh, let us assume that I'm standing in front of a mountain and I have this foot ruler and I intend to find out the height of the mountain. Would it be possible for me to use this foot ruler and start climbing the mountain and as I go up, measure it with the foot ruler? Would it be possible? No. The mountain is thousands of feet high and using a foot ruler, neither is my scale correct nor is the unit that I'm using correct and the object that I'm measuring is far, far too large to be measured by a unit like this. The reverse can also happen. When we have atoms, do you know that one atom of hydrogen weighs in grams, it weighs 1.6736 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams, which means the it is 0 0.000, there are 23 zeros and 16736 grams is the mass of one atom of hydrogen, which is, which is uh, extremely small, it's ridiculously small and hence using uh, the unit of gram for atoms is actually uh, impractical because if you use grams it's kind of unfathomable how small or the mass of an atom is. Therefore chemists in the 19th century found a solution to this and they assigned a special unit of measurement for the mass of atoms and this unit was called the atomic mass unit. At that time, there were no proper techniques of measuring the masses. So what did they do? They just measured mass relative to another mass. For example, I'm standing here and my friend is standing next to me and I'm heavier than my friend. Well, my mass is more than hers. There's a third friend who is even heavier than me. So her mass is even more than me so obviously in we, uh, what about her mass to the friend? it obviously is more than the first friend too so when you have one fixed uh, reference and you start comparing all others to that that is what was done by the chemists they took hydrogen atom to be and they assumed that one atom of hydrogen would be assigned the mass of one atomic mass unit why did they take hydrogen? Because hydrogen is the lightest element and therefore they said that there can be no smaller mass than this. And they said that okay, then hydrogen should have a mass of one atomic mass unit. But from 1961, scientists, they decided that hydrogen is a very unstable element and therefore using hydrogen as a reference is not a very good idea. And besides, there was another factor. Hydrogen is present as three isotopes, the protium, deuterium, and tritium, having three masses, one, two, and three. And what if you get another atom? And how do you choose that the one that you got is 1H1, it's protium? So what did they do? We now had better techniques of finding out the mass of an atom. Mass spectrometry was a technique by which, which is used even today and by which very accurately you can find out the masses of atoms. So what was decided in 1961? It was decided that the reference would not be hydrogen. The reference would be carbon. And carbon has isotopes again. But it was decided that carbon-12 is the isotope which we would use as a reference. And today carbon-12 is used as a reference and it is assumed that one atomic mass unit would be equal to 1 upon 12th the mass of carbon-12. It was assumed that carbon-12 is the reference but the mass of carbon-12 is not 1. The mass of carbon-12 is 12. And therefore, one atomic mass unit would be 1 upon 12th of carbon-12. AMU, you know, in chemistry, we always try to find shorter forms. So instead of AMU, it was now called unified mass. And the symbol only U is also used for atomic mass unit. It's the same thing. It means the same. It is 1 upon 12th, the mass of carbon. Now, once the mass of carbon was found out, it was 1 upon 12th, the mass of carbon. It was found, what was it in grams? 1 upon 12 the mass of carbon in grams was calculated by mass spectrometry and it was found that it is equal to 1.66056 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams. 
This was the mass of one atom of car, uh, sorry, one atomic mass unit. That is, it was the mass of, of one upon twelfth the uh, atom of carbon twelve. And as I told you, by mass spectrometry, we also know that the mass of hydrogen in grams is one point six seven three six into ten to the power minus twenty four grams. So if we want to find out what is the mass of hydrogen in atomic mass units, what would we do? We we'll take the mass of uh, hydrogen in grams divided by the mass of one atomic mass unit in grams that is one unified mass in grams so 1.6736 is the mass of hydrogen divided by the mass of one atomic mass unit would give us the number of atomic mass units so this would be equal to 1.0078 amu in other words hydrogen which was assumed to be 1 amu is now according to the present uh, reference standard is now known uh, is equal to 1.0078 unified masses or atomic mass units similarly oxygen is according to this new system has a mass of 15.995 u in most of your calculations in your 11th and 12th standards you would be using masses which are rounded up. We usually have used the mass of oxygen as 16 and hydrogen, we still treat it as one. That is only done for the sake of making it simple for your calculations. But otherwise, if you did very precise calculations, you would have to take into consideration these places of decimal two. Let us now, this, this was atomic mass and the unit that we use, the atomic mass unit. We find that we, when we look at the periodic table that the atomic masses of elements are given in the entire periodic table and all these masses are fractional. They are not zeros anywhere. They are always point something. So what is the reason for these fractional masses? We can understand one of the reasons is this that when you compare it to the atomic mass unit you might not get a whole number for example hydrogen did not get the mass 1 it rather got the mass of 1.0078 amu so one reason is this but the other reason for fractional masses of uh, the um, atoms or elements in the periodic table is that we know in the previous video i told you where i was discussing the dalton's atomic theory I told you that isotopes uh, exist and isotopes are atoms of the same element which have the same atomic number but different mass numbers. In other words, they have the same uh, number of protons but the number of neutrons is different and hence it's the number of protons decides the element. So if it is the same, it means it's the same element. But if the mass is different, neutrons are different, then the sum of the two give you the mass. And therefore, these atoms, although they are of the same element, they have different masses. So we take a natural sample of an element and we find what is the percentage of the different isotopes of that element which are present in that natural sample. And once you know that the percentages of the different isotopes uh, is known to you and you know the exact mass in atomic mass units of that particular isotope, then we have to uh, use, take into consideration all of these uh, percentages and the masses and find out the average of all of these. How do you find out the average? Let's take this example here. This is a box and I've put a few colored balls in the box. The blue balls are 40 grams each, the red balls are 3 in number and they are 30 grams each and the green balls are 20 grams each. The blue balls are 4 in number, the green and red are 3-3. Three, three. In other words, I have 10 balls in the box. How do I find out the average, atomic, uh, average mass of these balls? So, although they are all balls, the, a ball, let us say, is an element. So if they are all balls, it's one element, but their masses are different. So we take, how do we find out the average? 40 is the mass and multiplied by the number of that, those balls plus 30 red balls into 3 is their number plus 20 green balls into, what's the number of green balls? 3 divided by the total number of balls. 
So this will give you 160 plus 90 plus 60 upon 10, which is 310 upon 10. So this is equal to 31 grams. So the average mass of the balls is 31 grams. So we do the same thing with elements. For example, carbon is present in three isotopic forms, carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. These are the relative abundances of these. 98.892% is the abundance of carbon-12 and the mass in AMUs of carbon-12 is 12. Carbon-13 is present only 1.108% of a sample would be carbon-13 and the mass of that would be 13.00335 AMUs. That is when you are comparing it to carbon-12, you remember? Carbon-14 is the third isotope and its abundance is it is very very little how much is it in a sample of 100 molecules you would have 2 into 10 to the power minus 10 of those molecules would be carbon 14 and their mass would be 14.00317 so how do we find out the average atomic mass the relative abundance into the mass plus the relative abundance into mass relative abundance into mass divided by it is percent. Percent means per 100. So what's the total number of carbon atoms? 100. So divided by 100. So what average atomic mass do you get? The average atomic mass, if you carry out this calculation, would be equal to 12.011 U. That is how the mass of carbon was calculated. And that is the mass which is stated in the periodic table.